Written over 2,700 years ago, Isaiah is the preeminent prophet of the coming era of peace. The early church fathers often cited his works when speaking of a coming period of peace on earth prior to the end of the world, and is also prophesied by Our Lady of Fatima. Yes, a miracle was promised at Fatima, the greatest miracle in the history of the world, second only to the resurrection. And that miracle will be an era of peace which has never really been granted before to the world. The Church Fathers also understood this period Isaiah spoke of to be one and the same as that of the millennium that Saint John foretold in the 20th chapter of Revelation, what the Fathers also called the Day of the Lord, or Sabbath rest, for the Church. Behold, the Day of the Lord shall be a thousand years. Letter of Barnabas, the Fathers of the Church, ch. 15. They interpreted both Isaiah's and St. John's symbolic language to refer to the end of a wicked global reign, after the beast and false prophet are cast into hell, Rev. 1920, and a judgment of the living takes place. Then, the scriptures will be vindicated, peace will reign for a time, and as our Lord said, this gospel of the kingdom will be preached throughout the world as a witness to all nations, and then the end will come. Matt 24:14. Most significantly, the words of the Our Father will be fulfilled at last when Christ's kingdom will come in a new modality, and the Father's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This hope was beautifully expressed by Saint Louis de Montfort who said the saints during that time will surpass in holiness most other saints as much as the cedars of Lebanon tower above little shrubs. Your divine commandments are broken, your gospel is thrown aside. Torrents of iniquity flood the whole earth carrying away even your servants. Will everything come to the same end as Sodom and Gomorrah? Will you never break your silence? Will you tolerate all this forever? Is it not true that your will must be done on earth as it is in heaven? Is it not true that your kingdom must come? Did you not give to some souls, dear to you, a vision of the future renewal of the church? This renewal, Isaiah foretells, involves a certain restoration of creation through a triumph over evil, sickness, and division, for a time. These are the words of Isaiah concerning the millennium. For there will be a new heaven and a new earth, and the former will not be remembered nor come into their heart, but they will be glad and rejoice in these things, which I create. There shall no more be an infant of days there, nor an old man that shall not fill up his days. For the child shall die a hundred years old, for as the days of the tree of life, so shall be the days of my people, and the works of their hands shall be multiplied. My elect shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth children for a curse. For they shall be a righteous seed blessed by the Lord, and their posterity with them. Saint Justin Martin. So, what is coming then is the chaining of Satan, Rev. 20-4. But then that also means, we are now standing in the face of the greatest historical confrontation humanity has gone through. We are now facing the final confrontation between the Church and the Anti-Church, of the Gospel versus the Anti-Gospel, of Christ versus the Anti-Christ. It is a trial, of 2,000 years of culture and Christian civilization, with all of its consequences for human dignity, individual rights, human rights and the rights of nations. This final battle is steadily progressing toward its peak, a clash of kingdoms. Indeed, just as Saint John foretold the rise of global totalitarianism under a beast, before an era of peace, Rev. 13-5, so too did Isaiah. And just as Saint John emphasized how the beast would dominate through the economy by controlling who could buy or sell, Rev. 13-17, Isaiah reveals how this Antichrist will likewise dominate over the world's wealth. A prophecy of global communism. In this past Wednesday's first mass reading, Isaiah warns a stubborn and unrepentant Israel, which is a type of the church who is the new Israel, cf. Catechism of the Catholic Church, n. 877, 
How a king will come from Assyria to purify their nation. Woe to Assyria! My rod in anger, my staff in wrath. Against an impious nation I send him, and against a people under my wrath I order him to seize plunder, carry off loot, and tread them down like the mud of the streets. But this is not what he intends, nor does he have this in mind. Rather, it is in his heart to destroy, to make an end of nations not a few. For he says, By my own power I have done it, and by my wisdom, for I am shrewd. I have moved the boundaries of peoples, their treasures I have pillaged, and, like a giant, I have put down the enthroned. My hand has seized like a nest the riches of nations. As one takes eggs left alone, so I took in all the earth. No one fluttered a wing, or opened a mouth, or chirped. According to some early church fathers such as Hippolytus, Victorinus and Lactantius, the Antichrist may originate from present-day Syria, Iraq, which was ancient Assyria. Another king shall arise out of Syria, born from an evil spirit, and he will constitute and call himself God, and will order himself to be worshipped as the Son of God, and power will be given him to do signs and wonders, then he will attempt to destroy the temple of God, and persecute the righteous people, and there will be distress and tribulation such as there never has been since the beginning of the world. To be certain, the Antichrist is an actual person, but he also comes to reign through a global empire, a beast with seven heads. What is most notable in Isaiah's passage is what this, him, whom God sends to chastise the nations does. He seizes plunder, carries off loot, moves boundaries, and snatches the riches of the nations. In other words, this is precisely what communism does. It seizes private property, confiscates wealth, stifles private enterprise, and annihilates the boundaries of nations. In her 1921 book Exposing the Plot for a Communist, World Revolution, author Nesta H. Webster tackled the underlying root philosophy of the secret societies of Freemasonry and Illuminatism who are driving today's present upheaval. It is the notion that, civilization is all wrong, and that salvation for the human race lies in a, return to nature. Not only is this clearly nuanced in the United Nations 17, Sustainable Development, Goals, but it was also highlighted, and condemned, by Pope Leo XIII. At this period, however, the partisans of evil seems to be combining together, and to be struggling with united vehemence, led on or assisted by that strongly organized and widespread association called the Freemasons. No longer making any secret of their purposes, they are now boldly rising up against God himself. That which is their ultimate purpose forces itself into view, namely, the utter overthrow of that whole religious and political order of the world which the Christian teaching has produced, and the substitution of a new state of things in accordance with their ideas, of which the foundations and laws shall be drawn from mere naturalism. The philosopher François-Marie Arouet, known as Voltaire, was one of the most powerful French Masons whom one man described as, the most perfect incarnation of Satan that the world ever saw. Voltaire supplies the vision and reason why so many popes condemned and warned about their plot for a global revolution, which, clearly, is well underway. When conditions are right, a rain will spread across the whole earth to wipe out all Christians, and then establish a universal brotherhood without marriage, family, property, law or God. François-Marie Arouet de Voltaire, Stephen Mahawald, She Shall Crush Thy Head, Kindle Edition. Former USSR President, Michael Gorbachev, who founded Green Cross International to promote the UN's initiatives and who remains an avowed atheist and communist, stated on the PBS Charlie Rose Show. We are part of the cosmos. Cosmos is my God. Nature is my God. L believe that the 21st century will be the century of the environment, the century when all of us will have to find an answer to how to harmonize relations between man and the rest of nature. We are part of nature. October 23, 1996, Canada Free Press. Webster emphasizes how the elimination, i.e., plundering, of private property is key to a new world order. Quoting French philosopher and Freemason Jean-Jacques Rousseau, 
She summarizes how the philosophy behind these secret societies is the idea that private possession is the root of discord. The first man who bethought himself of saying, this is mine, and found people simple enough to believe him was the real founder of civil society. What crimes, what wars, what murders, what miseries and horrors would he have spared the human race who, snatching away the spades and filling the ditches, had cried out to his fellows, beware of listening to this imposter. You are lost if you forget that the fruits of the earth belong to all and the earth to no one. In these words, of Rousseau, the whole principle of communism is to be found. Of course, the best deceptions always have a kernel of truth, if not a lot of truth. This is why the young today are being so easily drawn into Marxist principles once again. But Webster exposes the insanity of this sophistry for what it is. Destroy civilization in its entirety and the human race sinks to the level of the jungle in which the only law is that of the strong over the weak, the only incentive the struggle for material needs. For although Rousseau's injunction, go back into the woods and become men, may be excellent advice if interpreted as a temporary measure, go back into the woods and remain there, is a counsel for anthropoid apes. As to the distribution of the fruits of the earth, one has only to watch two thrushes on the lawn disputing over a worm to see how the question of food supply is settled in primitive society. Which is why Our Lady appeared at Fatima to beg for the consecration of Russia to her Immaculate Heart, lest the errors of Russia, communism, about to take hold there through the Bolshevik Revolution, would begin to spread throughout the entire world. Our Lady was not heeded. As Pope Pius XI pointed out in his powerful and prophetic encyclical, Divine Redemptoris, Russia and its people were usurped by those authors and abettors who considered Russia the best prepared field for experimenting with a plan elaborated decades ago, and who from there continued to spread it from one end of the world to the other. Our words are now receiving sorry confirmation from the spectacle of the bitter fruits of subversive ideas, which we foresaw and foretold, and which are threatening every other country of the world. Pope Pius XI, Divini Redemptoris, Indeed, this radical agenda for the utter overthrow of that whole religious and political order of the world is proceeding as planned. A proposed United Nations blueprint called Agenda 21, pushed by radical but influential environmentalist Maurice Strong and signed onto by 178 member nations, has been absorbed and retooled under the current plan, Agenda 2030. Its predecessor called for the abolition of national sovereignty and the dissolution of property rights. Agenda 21. Land cannot be treated as an ordinary asset, controlled by individuals and subject to the pressures and inefficiencies of the market. Private land ownership is also a principal instrument of accumulation and concentration of wealth and therefore contributes to social injustice. If unchecked, it may become a major obstacle in the planning and implementation of development schemes. I'm sure the prophet Isaiah would be blowing a very large trumpet were he alive today. Especially when you consider what is happening in plain sight under the cover of COVID-19 and radical quarantine measures for the common good, one of the greatest wealth transfers in history. And stock analyst Greg Manorino of Trader's Choice claims, we have not seen anything yet. In order for the Federal Reserve to finish its plan, to own the planet, which we're in the heart of it right now, they're funneling trillions of dollars around the world to other central banks to buy assets. In other words, the world's wealth is quickly being concentrated into a handful of powerful banking families, who are Freemasons. Consider the words of the Prophet Micah, this Saturday's first mass reading. Woe to those who plan iniquity, and work out evil on their couches in the morning light, i.e. broad daylight, they accomplish it when it lies within their power. They covet fields, and seize them, houses, and they take them. They cheat an owner of his house, a man of his inheritance. Micah chapter 2 verses 1 to 2. That will be the time in which righteousness shall be cast out, and innocence be hated. In which the wicked shall prey upon the good as enemies. Neither law, nor order, nor military discipline shall be preserved. All things shall be confounded and mixed together against right, and against the laws of nature. Thus the earth shall be laid waste, 
as though by one common robbery. When these things shall so happen, then the righteous and the followers of truth shall separate themselves from the wicked, and flee into solitudes. Lactantius, Church Father, the Divine Institute. Perhaps this is the saddest tragedy of the present hour as we watch rioters burning buildings, looting, toppling statues, attacking police officers, calling openly for Marxist rule to reign. They are essentially handing power over to a banking cartel who are increasingly calling the shots. The irony of this revolution was not lost on Benedict XVI. A new intolerance is spreading. That is quite obvious. A negative religion is being made into a tyrannical standard that everyone must follow. That is then seemingly freedom, for the sole reason that it is liberation from the previous situation. Light of the World, A Conversation with Peter Sewald, page 52. As I have written before, war and division are from the playbook of Freemasonry. Stoking international tensions, funding both sides of a war, fomenting racial and gender divisions, breaking everything down in order to eventually build it up again. Ordo ab chaos, order out of chaos, is the secret society's modus operandi. Thomas Jefferson wrote to John Wales Epps Monticello, t, he spirit of war and indictment, since the modern theory of the perpetuation of debt, has drenched the earth with blood, and crushed its inhabitants under burdens ever accumulated. Sound familiar? We think of the great powers of the present day, of the anonymous financial interests which turn men into slaves, which are no longer human things, but are an anonymous power which men serve, by which men are tormented and even slaughtered. They, i.e., anonymous financial interests, are a destructive power, a power that menaces the world. Pope Benedict XVI The Fourth Industrial Revolution one could not end this meditation on Isaiah's prescient words without noting one other key aspect by which communism is spreading again throughout the world. Green, politics. As an official on the UN's Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, IPCC, quite candidly admitted. One has to free oneself from the illusion that international climate policy is environmental policy. Instead, Climate change policy is about how we redistribute de facto the world's wealth. And again, this is the first time in the history of mankind that we are setting ourselves the task of intentionally, within a defined period of time, to change the economic development model that has been reigning for at least 150 years, since the Industrial Revolution. Just listen to one of the architects of the New World Order, whose mission is to promote precisely what Isaiah prophesied, open, borders of nations. This is the crisis of my lifetime. Even before the pandemic hit, I realized that we were in a revolutionary moment where what would be impossible or even inconceivable in normal times had become not only possible, but probably absolutely necessary. And then came COVID-19, which has totally disrupted people's lives and required very different behavior. It is an unprecedented event that probably has never occurred in this combination. And it really endangers the survival of our civilization. We must find a way to cooperate on fighting climate change in the novel coronavirus. George Soros, May 13, 2020. Independent.co.uk This is the same Soros openly funding these violent revolutionaries, according to an undercover expose by Project Veritas. Indeed, we are entering what the United Nations-backed World Economic Forum calls the Great Reset and Fourth Industrial Revolution. According to their website, it is a technological revolution that will fundamentally alter the way we live, work, and relate to one another. In its scale, scope, and complexity, the transformation will be unlike anything humankind has experienced before. We do not yet know just how it will unfold. But one thing is clear. The response to it must be integrated and comprehensive, involving all stakeholders of the global polity, from the public and private sectors to academia and civil society. January 14, 2016. WeForum.org. But did we ask or vote for this? Here, the latter part of Isaiah's prophecy is also remarkably coming to fruition. Over all the earth, no one fluttered a wing, or opened a mouth, or chirped. 
No, this revolution is happening with our full cooperation as we all connect to the Internet of Things and surrender our privacy and freedom at the same time. Yes, it's remarkable how quickly countries, one by one, confine their healthy populations to virtual house arrest with barely any resistance. How no one has asked how those trillions in free government checks are going to be paid back. And what a strange silence from the hierarchy of the church as they closed parishes without a peep. The narrative on social media is tightly controlled as tech giants go into hyper-censorship mode. Even mayors and governors have been strangely quiet as rioters occupy and destroy their streets in the name of fighting racism. And rather than denounce their Marxist tactics, many have quietly joined them out of cowardice, fear, or ignorance. Indeed, people are increasingly afraid to flutter a wing or open a mouth for fear of being banned, shamed, or even fired. Isaiah seemingly foresaw this in stunning accuracy. But so too have several popes and members of the hierarchy. The Vatican's study on the New Age called, Jesus Christ, the bearer of the water of life, is a critical prophetic work that explains in more detail the warnings a century earlier of previous popes, of a, global vision, minus Christianity, based on a blend of environmentalism, technology, and playing with the DNA of life altogether. Deep Ecology's emphasis on biocentrism denies the anthropological vision of the Bible, in which human beings are at the center of the world. It is very prominent in legislation and education today, in the ideological theory underlying population control policies and experiments in genetic engineering, which seem to express a dream human beings have of creating themselves afresh. How do people hope to do this? By deciphering the genetic code, altering the natural rules of sexuality, defying the limits of death. In other words, it is a revolution that will culminate exactly in how Isaiah, St. John, our Lord and St. Paul said it would, in man putting himself in the place of God. That day, the day of the Lord, will not come, unless the rebellion, revolution, comes first, and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself against every so-called God or object of worship, so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, proclaiming himself to be God. But it will be a short reign. The Lord will break the wicked, says Isaiah, and for a time, there will be a period of peace and justice. He shall strike the ruthless with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked. Justice shall be the band around his waist, and faithfulness a belt upon his hips. Then the wolf shall be a guest of the lamb. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest mountain and raised above the hills. All nations shall stream toward it. For from Zion shall go forth instruction, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations, and set terms for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. One nation shall not raise the sword against another, nor shall they train for war again, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Oh, when in every city and village the law of the Lord is faithfully observed, when respect is shown for sacred things, when the sacraments are frequented, and the ordinances of Christian life fulfilled, there will certainly be no more need for us to labor further to see all things restored in Christ. And then? Then, at last, it will be clear to all that the Church, such as it was instituted by Christ, must enjoy full and entire liberty and independence from all foreign dominion. He shall break the heads of his enemies, that all may know, that God is the King of all the earth, that the Gentiles may know themselves to be men. All this, venerable brethren, we believe and expect with unshakable faith. Pope Pius X, E. Supremi, encyclical on the restoration of all things